This week's responding to your comments is on hemorrhoids, So as we say in the UK, piles. Danny Gogo 23 put a comment saying, Hey bro, I need your help. I got hemorrhoids and I need to get rid of them. What's the best treatment? Don't worry Danny, I got you. Hit that like button if you're fired up for this and let's go. Okay, so let's dive straight into tip number one. I need you guys to be honest with me in the comments below. Is this you when you need a poop? Be honest, leave a comment, watch. Ooh. Ooh, nearly forgot the phone. Ah. So if this is you, then you need to stop using your pooping time for catching up on your phone time, okay? So tip number one, I want you to remember this. You need to spend a maximum of 10 minutes on the throne per pooping session, okay? So that means you cannot take your phone into the toilet with you. Now you see, the longer you sit on the toilet, because of the design of the toilet and the toilet seat, it means more pressure and blood flow to the rectal veins. So if you're spending hours on there, you're never gonna be able to get rid of your hemorrhoids because there's gonna be so much blood pouring into those rectal veins, and we don't want that. Now before we move on to the next tip, if you're finding this information helpful, show some love and click that like button and leave me a comment too. Also, if you know someone will find this information helpful, share this video to them right now because I'm sure they'll appreciate that you're thinking of them. And diving straight into tip number two, stop straining. This is linked to tip number one, but remember, if you're straining, those rectal veins that we spoke about, they're gonna get dilated, they're gonna get full of blood, and it's gonna make your hemorrhoids worse. And if you're now thinking to yourself, well, Abraham, if you want me to be done in 10 minutes, I'm gonna have to strain. Well, we're gonna have to go on the next frame and I'll tell you what I think. Because you see, when someone tells me that, it sounds like you have hard stools and might be slightly constipated. So tip number three, it's all about avoiding constipation and having soft stools. Now I do have a video which goes into loads of detail on this, on how to have soft stools and avoid constipation. It's gonna make this video really long if I go into it in detail. So after you've watched all the tips, go and watch that video. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description. And by the way, if you're finding this information helpful right now, share some love, click that like button, leave me a comment below too, and let's move on to tip number four because it's a game changer. And moving swiftly on to tip number four, you need to avoid toilet paper, especially when you have hemorrhoids. Anyone with hemorrhoids should really be doing this. You see, when you're wiping with tissue paper, it causes these micro tears in the tissue of the bottom area, okay? What does this mean? It basically means bleeding, discomfort, and not allowing things to heal or recover. And this basically means that your hemorrhoids can't recover. It's like having a scab and you keep picking at it or scratching it. It's never gonna heal, okay? So tip number five is all about finding toilet paper alternatives, such as if you have a bidet, you can use that, or you can get portable bidets online, you can buy them, or just watch some YouTube videos and you can learn how to make your own portable usable bidet so you don't have to use the toilet paper anymore. So diving straight into tip number six, steroid and local anesthetic formulations. These are the big guns when it comes to treating hemorrhoids, okay? They reduce inflammation and they reduce the pain from the hemorrhoids. Now, generally speaking, I recommend the ointments and the suppositories to my patients instead of the creams. Reason being is that they last longer and stay in that area longer. Also, always make sure you use it after you've emptied your bowels, okay? Because if you do it before that, it's just gonna be a waste. And generally speaking, you want your ointment or suppository to contain a local anesthetic to help numb the area, such as lidocaine, as well as a steroid to help reduce the inflammation, such as hydrocortisone. Now, if you found this information helpful today, show some love and donate our team a cup of coffee. Simply click the thanks button below and donate whatever you can, because your support will help us create more medical videos just like this one. Sending awesome vibes.